Good morning, brothers and sisters, shalom, all over the world. We come to you today from Brother Carl's house, who thankfully the Lord has brought home, and we pray for him and his, his kidney stone that it will feel better. And it's really nice to be at his, his bungalow, and that we can share the sacrament with you today. So I'm going to ask Brother Kyle to say the opening prayer. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so happy to be here this day to do thy worship. We ask that thy presence will be with us, that they will see us nicely through this day. We ask thee for the many blessings that we do have, and we thank you so much for them. And I say this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> thank you, Carl, for that. And uh, we'd just like to thank you, God, that you know every one of our names. And, uh, and like they say, you know all the hairs on our heads, or lack of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know everybody, Lord, and it's really good. Even though we can't see you, we know you love us, Lord. So, and that goes for everybody, not just select people, which some churches do select people. So we welcome everybody. We welcome the young, the old, the unchurch, the de-church, and anybody to come and join us and take the sacrament as well. So we take the sacrament and we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ who who died on the cross for us. And he showed us this and uh, he showed us when he was speaking to his disciples, he, he, he lifted up the wine and said, drink this in remembrance of me. And he took the bread and he said, eat this in remembrance of me. So we can do this every week and I hope you've got your emblems with you and you can join us. Uh, so me and Kyle's going to say the prayers as we get ready now. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So what we're going to do, we're going to say one of the prayers each, and then we will pass the sacrament over. So, are we doing the bread first? The bread first. So, if you'd like to... If you'd like to bow or kneel, whatever you can do, over to you, Brother Kyle. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to pass the bread over. <laughs> so we take a few minutes while we are eating our bread to contemplate on Jesus and his love for us.
As we get ready to take the wine, I ask you to kneel or bow, whatever you can do. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. First off, I want to thank brothers Michael and Kyle for offering the sacrament today. And I feel that we are very blessed to have these brothers willing and able to help us out so we can actually do a Sabbath service again instead of merely a Sabbath message. I want to share a scripture with you today from the Plates of Brass, and this is from 4th Moses chapter 31. And here it says, The angel of the Lord spoke unto Moses and Zephora, and Zephora, in case you don't know, is Moses' wife, saying, Thou shalt be washed, fully immersed in living water, be it by a running stream or with the mikvah. And this thou shalt do to fulfill all righteousness. For except that thou be born of the water, thou cannot enter into the presence of Ha'ilahim. Therefore ye shall wash with water that ye die not. And when thou cometh up out of the water, thou shalt be clean, and the breath shall fall upon thee. And this thou shalt do that desire to be holy unto the Lord, and walk in Teshiva, or repentance, before the Lord your God, before Yavah thy Elohim, and to wear the mantle of righteousness. As Michael and Kyle were sharing the sacrament with us, they were blessing the bread and the wine for us, there may be some who ask, why do we do this? Why do we take the sacrament? Well, there's a couple of different reasons why we partake of it. One of which is to renew our covenants that we're making here at baptism, to remind ourselves and remember that we are born again. We're partaking of ourselves with Jesus Christ. And I'd like to go back to the first verse that I read, where it says that we must be fully immersed in living water. What does that mean to be fully immersed in living water? When Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman, who came to draw water. Jesus asked her for a drink. And Jesus tells her at one point in the conversation, he says in John 4.10, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's asking you for water, it's asking you for a drink, then you would have asked him or you would have asked me, the Savior saying, for living water. So what is this living water? Well, later on in the seventh chapter of John, verses 37 through 39, Jesus teaches again, saying, If a man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And I'm going to change that to say, If anyone thirsts, let them come unto me and drink. They that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. So, what is this living water? And why is it necessary? for us to be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, in my mind, is the living water because Jesus is the Christ. He is the author of our salvation and is he that offers us eternal life. We call this sacrament communion because we are in communion and communication with Christ through the Holy Spirit. And that goes back into the next part of the scripture. When we come out of the water, we'll be clean, and the breath shall fall upon us. What is this breath? It's the Holy Spirit. And when I say the Holy Spirit, I don't mean we get possessed by the Holy Ghost. I see the Holy Ghost as a member of the Godhead, whether you believe in the Trinity or separate beings. But I think the Holy Spirit is something different. I think the Holy Spirit is, as 
it says in Lectures on Faith, that connection between us and God. According to Lectures on Faith, it says that Jesus, being the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and having overcome, received the fullness of the glory of the Father, possessing the same mind with the Father, which mind is the Holy Spirit. Well, that doesn't sound like the same thing that would be the Holy Ghost. It says further down in the same chapter that as joint heirs with Jesus Christ, says, all those who keep his commandments shall grow up from grace to grace and become heirs of the heavenly kingdom and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, possessing the same mind, being transformed to the same image or likeness, even the expressed image of him who fulfills all in all being filled with the fullness of his glory and become one in him, even as the Father, Son, and Spirit are one. So this idea of the breath falling on us, I think this is us being filled with the Spirit in our oneness with God. And that's why it's necessary for us to enter the presence of God. How can we enter the presence? How can we enter the kingdom if we aren't of the same mind. Now, that doesn't mean that as finite beings, we have to understand things infinitely as God does. But it does mean that we become disciples of Jesus Christ. And so we walk in Teshiva. And that allows us to wear this mantle of righteousness. And I say that in all humility. This mantle of righteousness isn't some thing that makes us as Christians better than other people. It makes us servants to the people. That's what the mantle of righteousness is. We pick up our cross and follow him. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. And what did he do? He served. He lived and he died for us. And so that mantle of righteousness is us accepting his grace, becoming his friends and his servants by serving others, by loving our neighbors, by helping all those around us. And so one of the things that we remember as we partake of the sacrament is the covenant that we made when we were born again. It's, it's a time for us to reflect and to grow in that grace as we move forward in Teshuvah. Now, a friend of mine made a really interesting observation that I fully believe that he made through the Spirit, and that is that when we're taking the sacrament, we're also making a covenant at that time with those that we are partaking the sacrament with. And I want to point this out because if you're taking the sacrament with us today, that makes you one of our neighbors. Now, to be fair, everyone's everyone's neighbor anyway. But when we take the sacrament together, we're making a special commitment to serve one another. Let's look at that sacrament prayer. I'm just going to go with Moroni 4 and 5 here and make this easy. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify the bread. So please bless and sanctify this bread that we're about to eat it. All those that are going to eat it. That we all together are eating it in remembrance of the body of your Son, Jesus. And witness unto you that we are willing to take upon ourselves his name. We are Christians. So every time we take the sacrament, we are retaking upon ourselves his name, just as we took upon ourselves his name when we were baptized. And when we were born, even before that, when we were born again, that we will always remember him and keep his commandments so that we can always have his spirit with us. And in Moroni 5, it says the same thing. We want to bless and sanctify the wine. We're setting this wine apart, just like we set the bread apart. We're blessing it and sanctifying it. We're, we're renewing our covenant. We're doing it again in the remembrance this time of the blood of Jesus. So the body and the blood that was shed for us so that we could witness unto God that we remember the Father and have that spirit to be with us. But notice that it isn't an individual thing. This is said collectively that all those who eat of it, all those who drink of it, it's this unifying thing that brings us together in Christ, reminding us that we, if we are one individually with God through 
the baptism of water and fire, as mentioned in 4th Moses, and again through this restating of the covenant here, as we take the sacrament, we're in it together. It's not just me alone with God. It's all of us taking the sacrament together. We're covenanting to be one not only with the Father, but with each other. And that brings me to the Shema, one of my favorite scriptures. It's in the fifth book of Moses and in Deuteronomy. I'm just going to quote Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel, Yavah is our Elohim. Yavah is one, or Yavah is unity, or Yavah is united. What does that mean? Now, you could easily say that the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Mother, Holy Spirit, they're all united in that Holy Spirit. But I think it goes further. And I think the sacrament that you just took takes us there, reminds us of that. I think he's also one with Israel. I think the Father, the Mother, the Son, the Holy Ghost are united with Israel through that breath, through that Holy Spirit, through that mind of God. And so when we renew our covenant with the Lord, when we partake the sacrament, I believe we're also renewing our covenant to one another in Christ. Satan tries so hard and he succeeds so well in getting us to fight as Christians. Whereas the Shema very simply reminds us, no, we're to be one. Third Nephi in chapter five in the RAV in chapter 11 in the OPV, one of my favorite scriptures I quote all the time. Contention is not of God, but of the devil. If we're going to have the Lord's Spirit to be with us, then we can't merely be one with God. We must be one with one another. That's my Sabbath message. I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you. That's our sacrament service over. And uh, I just want you to pray for Brother Carl because he's having trouble with his kidney stone, that he'll be healed. So we remember him in our prayers. So on a Wednesday night, I join with Brother David Ferriman and Brandt, and we have a prayer meeting at about, well, it's half seven in UK. I don't know what time it is in America. And hopefully Kyle will join us with that as well. So we pray for people that, we know that need praying for. We also pray for Pete. And whatever you, you need to uh, pray for, just let us know. So let's hope you have a God-blessed day. And uh, we'll see you next Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And see you soon. <laughs>